Well, good afternoon. Um, my text is in Malachi 4, verse 1. But um, I trust that God has enough in here that, that there's more for me to say. Um, I'd like to be focusing on a different aspect of this prophecy, uh, the part that has already been fulfilled, like the part talking about Jesus' first coming. Um, and I'd also like to focus more on the sun rather than the day. So um, the Lord had this all worked out. It's, they're, they're not going to overlap. Um, so I'd like to go ahead and read that. Malachi 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be as ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. <clears throat> so, um, kind of looking at the... Um, the part that was fulfilled when Christ came, we, we can see this day, we can see when God's wrath is upon the wicked and they're being consumed. We see no, no one can save himself. Everyone was hopeless. But then we see that this son of righteousness, this is son like S-U-N, this son arises for everyone to see. It's a salvation from the curse of sin, and it gives life and light and victory to all who fear God's name. This was fulfilled when Jesus came. When Jesus came to die for our sins and to pay the price to heal us with, with healing in his wings. And so today I'd like to look at some times in the Bible where Jesus is referred to as the Son. And I'm not going to cover his being the Son of Righteousness as much because, well, that would take all day. But um, I'd like to talk about, first of all, why the Spirit uses this metaphor, why he's referred to as the Son, and then what happens when he arises and then we'll look at some fulfillments of prophecies of him being the son. So first of all, why does the spirit refer to him as the son? And so as I was thinking, I, I, was, I looked at some of the characteristics of the son. And we can see that Jesus has a lot in common with the characteristics of the son. Um, first of all, the son represents eternity. In Psalm 72, uh, verse 1, it says, Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the, king, the king's son. And then verse 17, it says, His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun. And men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. So, um, the son... It, it represents eternity, and Jesus is the eternal one. And um, so that's part of the reason that God you called him the son of righteousness. And the son is also faithful. We, um, how many here wondered whether the sun was going to rise today? Uh, I have a feeling not very many. And G Jesus is faithful as well says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. The Son is necessary for life. Um, without the Son, there would be no life on the earth. And without our Son, we would be dead in our transgressions and sins. Amen. Psalms 80, verse 1. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, Thou that dwellest between cherubims, shine forth. 
before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up thy strength and come and save us. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. The psalmist recognized that without God's face shining on us, without our Son of Righteousness coming, then we would not be saved and we would be hopeless. And, and another way of saying it in, is in Isaiah 9, verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. And so death was upon us, and we were dead spiritually, but Jesus came, and he shined on us. The Son of Righteousness arose, and he gave us life. Um, the sun also uh, causes things to grow. Without, without the sun, we can, there would be no growth. It says that in our text, it says, Unto you that fear my name shall the sun of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall grow, go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Amen. So the sun provides growth. He allows us to grow. But uh, more importantly, we can see that he is bright. The sun is bright. It has great glory. Um, Jesus, well, in Matthew 17, verse 1, says, After six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into the high mountain apart, and was transfigured before him, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. And so, even though on earth Jesus didn't usually um, show his glory physically, um, this time he let some of it through. And it says, even his garments were white as the light. <clears throat> but when Jesus... Uh, um, was risen again, and he um, he went up into heaven. Then his glory could shine forth more. Uh, when when Paul, this is Paul talking to King Agrippa, relating about when he got saved. In this is Acts twenty six thirteen, he says, "At midday, O King, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them that journeyed with me." And so he saw this above the brightness of the sun. And we know that Saul, as he was called then, uh, was blind until the Lord sent Ananias to go um, take the scales off his eyes. And so when Paul uh, or Saul asked, who, out, who art thou, Lord? This, Jesus said, I'm Jesus who thou persecutest. So this, this was Jesus in his glory. And when he appeared to Saul, it, it changed his life. He completely turned around. And he went from persecuting the church to preaching to the Gentiles. Uh, but when, when his, his glory is really going to show forth in heaven, it's, it says in Revelation 1.16, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Now this, this is very glorious. Jesus, you can see how, um, why the Spirit refers to Jesus as the Son of Righteousness. He has great glory. But um, another reason he refers to him as the sun is that the sun shines on everything. And Psalms 19, verse 1, says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. And then verse 4, it says, In them he hath set a tabernacle for the sun which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. 
So we can see that the sun, when the sun rises, there's um, nothing is hid from it. And just, the, just as it is with, the, with this sun, it is with our sun. Um, he shines unto all men. Uh, John 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was set to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So Jesus lights every man. He shines on everyone. His light um, is available to all. And he gives everyone an opportunity to come and be in his light and walk in his light. And his light is life. Um, and another way he shines on everything is going to be when he comes. It says that as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so, also, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So we, we can see that Jesus, that the Son, it, um, it represents eternity, it's faithful, necessary for life, causes to grow, it's bright, and it shines on everything. And so that, that's why the Spirit refers to Jesus as the Son. And I'm not going to spend very much time on this, but what is this light that the sun shines? Um, it, can, it can be many things. It can be his glory. Uh, we've seen examples of that. It's his holiness. Um, we know that it says to let your light so shine before men that men, they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So our light is, can be our good works, and the same with Jesus. Jesus showed his light by his good works. Um, we can also see that it says in him was life, and the life was the light of men. So this, the light is... A, his life that he offers. But uh, in our text, we can see it says that he is a son of righteousness. So his light is his righteousness that shines to everyone. It's offering everyone his righteousness. And so that, that's, that's what the light that he's shining is. Now, what, what happens when the sun arises? First of all, the wicked are destroyed. We could see um, in Malachi, it says that um, ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Um, the wicked are destroyed. Uh, it says in Nahum 3.17, Thy crown are as the locusts, and thy captains as the great grasshoppers, which camp in the hedges in the cold day. But when the sun ariseth, they flee away, and their place is not known where they are. Amen. And also, uh, talking about that in Second Thessalonians 2, 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And so the wicked are destroyed when the sun arises. And what, what is light to us is destruction for the wicked. Um, when, when the sun arises, uh, it gives us light and we can see. Second um, Peter 1.19 We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, 
until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Now, uh, this isn't necessarily the only meaning, but it is certainly a meaning of this verse that as we take heed unto this word, Jesus is the word, then the day star will arise in our hearts and we can see. Uh, John uh, eight twelve. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Um, so if, if we're near him, if we will have the light of life. Amen. He also says in John 12, 46, I am come a light into the world that whosoever, shall, whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And also, he talked about this a little earlier in the chapter, John 12, 35. Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have the light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of the light. These things spake Jesus, and departed, and did hide himself from them. So uh, while we have the light, while we have this opportunity in this world to believe on the Son, we need to take action and walk in, walk in his light. Which brings us to the next thing that happens when the sun arises. We, we have to make a decision, a choice, whether to follow him. It says, he that followeth me, in the verse we read, believeth on me, we can either do, believe and follow him, or we can go away from him. Uh, John 3, 19, and it, this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. And so we make a choice. When the sun rises, we, we can't just stay the same. We either have to uh, go away from him or we come near to him, bringing us to that point of decision. And so finally, I'd like to talk about just a few prophecies about him being the sun and the light. Uh, he, he was called the star. This is Balaam prophesying in Numbers 24, 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. <coughs> and then in Revelation 22, 16, Jesus says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. He's the star. Um, he's also a light to guide. Uh, Psalms 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And Jesus, Jesus is the word of God. And then uh, Zacharias says in Luke 176, And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, and through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give them light that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. He is our guide. When the sun arises, if we stay in his light, he will guide us. He's, he's a light unto our path. Um, a light of the Gentiles. Uh, 
Uh, Isaiah 42, 1. And behold, my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Then verse, in, down in verse 6. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. I will hold thine hand uh, I will, and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Uh, a light to light the... And then Simeon is speaking about Jesus. He says, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people, Israel. And so Jesus was the one who shone the light into uh, the darkness where the Gentiles were for those thousands of years when he came and he lit the Gentiles. He's the son of righteousness. He, and he's, he has the light of God's glory. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. And we know in Hebrews it says that Jesus is the brightness of his glory. So he's... His, the brightness of the sun is the brightness of God. And so the sun of righteousness is a, it's showing God's light and God's glory. But finally and most importantly, he is the light of the new Jerusalem. Um, Isaiah 60, verse 19. The sun shall, no more be the, shall be no more thy light by day, Neither for brightness shall the moon give a light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning are, shall be ended. And we see that fulfilled in Revelation 21, verse 23, talking about the new Jerusalem says, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Amen. So we can, we can see that um, Jesus is our son. He is our son of righteousness. Um, and in one sense he's already arisen and he has come and he's shined his light to us and when we become part of the new Jerusalem he will be our light so let's look forward to that